Tokyo City like a big playground When suddenly Batman burst from the shade And hit Godzilla with a bad grenade Godzilla got pissed and began to attack But didn't expect to be blocked by Shaq Who proceeded to open up a can of Shaq through When Aaron Carter came out of the blue And he started beating up Shaquille O'Neal Then they both got flattened by the Batmobile But before we could make it back to the Batcave Abraham Lincoln popped out of his grave And took an AK-47 out from under his hat Blew Batman away with a rat a tat But he ran out of bullets and he ran away Because often this prime came to save the day This is the ultimate showdown Of ultimate destiny Good guys, bad guys, and explosions As far as the eye can see And only one will survive I wonder who it will be This is the ultimate showdown Of ultimate destiny And hello and welcome to Gaming Fix. I'm Frank, and uh, eventually we might have some more hosts. Why not? Um, until then, uh, we're going to uh, talk about all the cool things in gaming and uh, do all the things that we've been doing. And uh, today, I decided that it would be really cool to. Uh, do a little rundown on how to build your own deck. So if you've been wanting to um, figure out how to build your own magic deck, maybe you've uh, been thinking about getting into magic, but you uh, this might be your first time. Maybe some friends play magic and uh, you, know, you really just don't feel comfortable with uh, just getting out there. Um, today, we're going to, I'm gonna show you how to uh, make a deck that's, uh, you know how to make your own serviceable deck and uh to at least play and have a good time but before i do any of that um we are going to talk about how i got my game on and the way that i got my game on was uh, of course as i always do i played puzzle empire i love puzzle empire it's a very good uh, fun game i play with make some make something else up and uh it's a. Uh, it's it's really been fun. Um, I'm on my third hero, that I'm currently working on getting towards tree uh, tree level, which is basically, uh, you send them all the way up, and then you want to get them to a uh, tree or to like skill trees, which give them other abilities besides just their main abilities, so that they can defend themselves, and it it does make them uh, more formidable heroes. So that when you're going against other teams in in war, uh, they just do more damage, and it makes you more valuable to the team. So that's what I was working on this week, and uh, right now I'm working on Urias. He's a snake guy, Uriah, Uriah, something like that. Anyway, he's a, a snake, and he's on Team Yellow. And I was working on getting him. Uh, bigger and our Halloween event has started. That was kind of fun. Uh, almost have that all finished up. Um, I think I probably might finish that uh, at the end of the the day here. Who knows? Um, also, um, for getting my game on, I had the Pathfinder game, and uh, that was kind of fun. Um, our heroes this time were. Uh, as I mentioned before, they were trapped in a, uh, they went to go uh, check out a diabolical church and uh, ended up going down into, uh, back into the dungeon that they were originally in. And they uh, discovered that uh, they wanted to go to uh, fight a dragon, as I had mentioned before. Uh, this time they decided that they were going to, they wanted to rest. And so they were going to tell they were either going to rest in town or they were going to um, report what was going on with the diabolic church to the Pathfinder Society. So uh, they were planning on going through the uh, the evil area, which was an evil um, kind of like there was stuff like sacrificial altar and a statue with a font of blood and all kinds of fun stuff like that and uh i uh what is that okay 
it was weird because it's like the way the things were cutting it looked like uh i was on a beach or something which i am not on the beach um it's just really hot to be honest so that kind of tends to happen um for some reason in uh in california it's hot i think it might be cold but the heater might be on in my house i'm not really sure anyway um then uh they went into this room and uh that's where they found out that there were some nasty mages some demon mages they weren't demons but they were worshipers of demons and uh Remy, our one of our main uh players uh used their go-to which is to put uh create a hole using um some witch powers and so uh that's always an interesting one um and uh, some creepy crawlies and uh so they were able to beat them uh it took about two hours and 30 minutes so pretty reasonable uh the melee character could not get out to them so they uh he pretty much left the fight the the fighter priest kind of left and went uh on his way to either wait for them or to protect the area they're not really sure so we'll find out uh this coming week uh, right now we have the vampire game which you can buy the shirt on that uh, we've been showing um on tpublic.com slash stores slash uh gaming hyphen f i x x and uh there you can get a uh a vampire shirt the vampire troop but right now the vampire troop is not running but you can also get a pathfinder shirt um the same exact link supporting our vampire or uh our pathfinder troop so and uh all Anytime you get anything off of that website, off of our store, uh, that helps us out and we really appreciate it. Um, so uh, also I've been watching Titans and uh, that's been really good. I think I'm probably behind uh, where most people are watching. I'm sure most people are watching um, on TV uh, because it's been announced as exclusively on um i can't think of the channel uh might be usa or something like that i don't know but anyway um i've been watching titans and uh i've been really enjoying that that's been a good time um i uh, watched all the way to the finale um which had uh which is really cool um the second season has uh the appearance of connor and uh i don't want to give away any spoilers but uh also uh jericho which i think might be a difference in I, i'm not really an expert i never read the comics but um i think that jericho might have originally been the main character and they might have switched the storyline a little bit where um jericho was the maybe the daughter ended up um getting killed by their mistakes or something like that because jerk because um the main character is a um not the main character but the the one of the main um heroes is a uh is a is a woman so well i'll say a girl actually because male i guess they're all like kind of young adults i don't know i don't know what what the proper term is at that point in time but um yeah so that was interesting um I, i've been enjoying watching that um it was really cool and uh i think uh, i know i already talked about shang li and i'm trying to think 
Oh, uh, recently I went to go see the Transformers movie, which was really funny because uh, I was like, you know, I kept telling people the story, which is, and it's true, that when I was about um, 11 and the Transformers movie came out in 1986, I want to say, they um, decided to run it with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, of all things. And so I didn't get a chance to see it. And uh, that was a bummer. But uh, it turns out that um, Transformers, uh, and I thought that this was my um, first time seeing it at the movies. And I was pretty surprised when uh, Facebook time hopped. And uh, I had a thing saying that I saw it on this one day and I looked at the day and it was like the only day they were showing uh, Transformers as a special shout factory release. So that was kind of odd uh, that I'd forgotten that I'd seen it at the theater because um, I just wanted to see it at the theater. Um, and then I ended up seeing it at the theater again. So that was fine. It was a good time. Um, it it would have been nicer. I think if it would have been um, I don't know, like we, if it wouldn't have been during the times that we're in, I think there would have been more people and it would have been just a more, you know, a jolly occasion, you know, instead it was like maybe 10 people seeing this movie. And it was weird because all of us knew it and like, but there was no interaction and nobody was like talking back to the screen or playing around or it, it was kind of weird because like you'd think that kind of thing might have happened, but everybody's really solemn about it. And it's like, we're going to watch our cartoon movie. That's what it was like. It was weird. Anyway, uh, so I'm trying to think. Oh, uh, I just started, and I really like the Squid Game. Um, and the reason it's funny because the reason I started it, I, I was gonna watch it. I as I mentioned, I do watch a lot of uh, the fun the fun shows on um, I watch the fun shows on on my treatment days because it's it's more enjoyable. And uh, this could be a problem. Um, I'm gonna try and get more light off of it i don't know if it's time or what the situation is um but um i try to uh watch more of those kind of shows and that's something that i was really enjoying uh watching um so you know i've been watching titans but i was trying to get titans working and um I, I hate to hit them up, but T-Mobile um, kind of didn't didn't follow up, and uh, or basically the uh, reception's bad, and it's kind of a problem. Um, I'm going to. It's not a very good light either. Well, I definitely want you to see my face, so I'm going to plug this in today sorry about this um this is new um keep in mind that you know most of these times we've been doing podcasts and this is our second video so if you could bear with me i appreciate it um i am going to talk while i plug this in because i don't want to uh you know shoot something so Oh no, it fell too. Oh, oh, that's frustrating. All right. Um, actually, you think that thing plugs in, but I don't know. I think it does, but I don't have it. Oh no, it doesn't. It actually only plugs in through this. Okay. So we're gonna try and use this and hope that it gives the same amount of light that I'm gonna need. Okay. So this is a little brighter. I'm going to try and diffuse it a little bit. Okay. It's a little shadowy, but you know, you can see me. 
it's not as uh, as good as the ring light but the ring light apparently um charges and then and then uh dies at a certain point so um i will figure out something to do with the lighting because that is going to be a problem and uh you know me being blind but that's okay all right so anyway um as i was saying uh i just started watching squid game and the reason is is because reception was really the point and uh i really thought it was a pretty cool movie a pretty cool show um it starts out it's basically somebody who just is you know he owes everybody gambling debts he's a total sad sap um trying to take care of his daughter but can't you know has problems getting her birthdays stuff like that then he ends up playing this game and he ends up getting uh called in and uh as things start going crazier and crazier and it's it kind of reminds me of the belco experiment so it kind of tells you the feel of it um another one is it's a little bit like uh the anime um the one where they play uh rock paper scissors um which becomes uh in the live action version becomes a pachinko match i think i mean maybe i'm wrong about that but i think it was something like that but yeah uh the squid game is really really good um it's it is a korean import but it is well translated it's on netflix and uh i'm into episode two and I got to say, it's a really solid uh, show and I would really recommend it. But, you know, I don't want to give any spoilers, but I'll just say it was it, it was a treat. It was a treat. All right. So um, I also I'm trying to think how we could do that. Well, uh, I went to uh, look around. Uh, this is. Um, so I'm done with how I got my game on. Things are going to screw with me today. It's kind of fun. Something. I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting how things are going to do things. Sometimes. I'm about ready to get irritated. But anyway, uh, so I went to, uh, a few different stores in my area, including uh, Guild House, which uh, we, you know, which I said uh, I sponsor, I go to, uh, I buy games there, bought some games when I went by there again. Uh, went by uh, Guild House, went by Metro. I support Metro as well, uh, but Metro basically sells T-shirts, they sell comic books, and they have some magic cards. Um, they don't really do tournaments, but you know is what it is uh, but they do have some really good books like for instance i noticed they had a spawn number five which i thought was really cool um oh was it it was a uh, spawn compendium i want to say it was like 45 or something like that i'm not sure i don't know if it'd be if it would work bringing it here um I don't know if I would read it either right away. So I mean, I get that, but I was looking at that and then I went over to Boba Tea. Um, and uh, when I went to Boba Tea, I've, I've gone to, not Boba Tea, sorry, Boba Rally. Boba Tea is just a drink. Boba Rally in uh, Bellflower uh, found out that they have flesh and blood cards, which is really cool. Uh, they have um, boxes of flesh and blood and they run magic tournaments and they have a magic tournament on Friday and it's $10 and you get a pack and then you get um, your preceding packs for uh, Friday night magic. And they're trying to get that going so um, it'd be pretty cool to go on the bottom floor you're not going to have it's not going to be a high competition tournament, but it'd be a pretty fun tournament um, i'm thinking about maybe checking it out on Friday um sometime i don't know 
Uh, and uh, yeah, one thing though that I noticed, and this was going to discuss, is there is a a large contingency now for pricing based off of market price. And I thought that was interesting. Like I, I had a store when I had a store, and even uh, the website now. The idea of making it a market price uh, concerns me because basically it's somebody's deciding how much money something is going to be and that's uh through usually through tcg player or uh well most people don't go by anything but tcg player that's what they mean when they say market um if you look at look up the cards it's going to be based off of tcg player which is basically whatever usually the way that's decided though is by specific stores making decisions um, one thing that i was working on um, when I had my store was the idea that people, um, the individual players should actually be setting prices. And uh, sometimes I think that that would make more sense. Um, I don't know, uh, but there are comments below. So if you disagree with me, feel free to um, put the comments and also subscribe to Gaming Fix because not only do we have uh, this gaming fix live now but we also have the one two three and i don't know if we'll be moving the, i've been trying to get it, its own channel but it doesn't have it right now so you have the one two three which is our wrestling show and that show is on mondays it wasn't th on this monday because uh i took a day off i'll do that sometimes uh and i'm trying to let people know when that is uh, you can check our Twitter handle uh, at Gaming Fix. That's a really good way to find things out on Twitter. Um, and we'll try and let people know when we're going to not uh, be having a show. Also, just to throw it out there, uh, we do have our Twitch stream. And uh, our Twitch stream is usually also on Monday. And that's at 12. And the, uh, well, the one, two, three is live on uh, YouTube and it's um, on Mondays at uh, right about four o'clock. The Twitch stream is on Mondays at 12. Our other Twitch stream, uh, the Final Fantasy at four is at four, uh, it's Final Fantasy and it's on Fridays. And, uh, I don't know what we're going to do with our Wednesday time because the Wednesday time that we had was basically because we were uh, going to be doing, or I was going to be running the vampire game. So um, I'll figure that out. And then uh, I can kind of let people know what that's going on. But uh, today, besides the magic segment that's coming up, I wanted to discuss, oh, one more thing before i get too far on that um one thing that i thought was really cool at um bobo rally is they have this really great deal they have these right here which i thought were kind of cool and i'm not gonna i don't want to change my voice or anything but this is a dark magician girl face mask and what's nice about this is it comes with a filter as well and uh these are, I got them, I think, uh, a little cheaper. Um, and that's kind of why I'm telling people about this. Uh, they're about $10. And if you get two, then you get one half off. So, and there's lots of different ones. Like I got this one and I got a one that's a Kakashi with the Leaf, with the leaf Village um, on it and uh, a pikachu the pikachu was like five but that ended up being the one that i got on and the but they all ended up being five because they were maybe marked five and it was but when they ring ring them up they were 10. so i'm going to say they were 10 so that that way if uh you know i got a deal tell them that frank um said he really appreciated the deal 
And uh, when you go to Boba Rally, these are really good. Um, I like them um, because they've got a nice character to them and they help, you know, they help you do what's right and, and help people, you know, not get like if you're even if you're vaccinated, you're not um, acting as, you know, if you happen to be um, asymptomatic and you're carrying, then, you know, this will help to, you know, not make somebody sick that you might not want sick. And, you know, up to you, but I, I think it's cool. And I like the fact that, you know, this is a nice dark magician girl. And uh, I, I really enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and that's pretty cool. Uh, one thing I was going to talk, I'm going to talk about because I'm really jazz. Uh, I've been getting into Gaslands a lot, and I've been talking about Gaslands. And uh, we have Gaslands refueled. I picked this up at uh, gaming at uh, Guildhouse, and uh, this is the newest edition of uh, Gaslands refueled, and this is from Osprey Games by Mike Hutchinson. And uh, this is the game where all you got to do is you get yourself uh, some Hot Wheels. And uh, it's pretty easy to, you can even get the, the weapons for your Hot Wheels. But, like, you don't have to do that. This I was pretty impressed with this because there's some things that's really cool about this. You could just get Hot Wheels. It's, uh, the game is actually what you see is what you get. So, or it's not what you see is what you get. It's based off of uh, the stat cards. And they're like stack cards like this. And uh, so you would write your, you basically write your, uh, your car design down here. And then you just have a car as a representation. And uh, what's nice is they include the, uh, so in order to play, um, when you're, you roll dice and that determines how your, um, like how weapons are going off movement stuff like that and you need these templates well these templates are included right here which i thought was really cool so um what's really nice about that and then the other thing that i thought was really crazy oh and there's wow there's more templates so there's two there's three templates that's cool then also it in here there's a chart um for your dice so that you just have to roll a number and it'll tell you what the effect is now you can go and buy like special dice you can buy plastic templates and it all told like you can buy this book for uh 30 dollars is this yeah that's how much this is um 30 dollars cover and uh, like two Hot Wheels, which is roughly about 50 cans, and you're good to go. Then you just write up your, your character description, uh, decide what team you wanna be on. They have some really cool teams, uh, like, let's see here. This is, and they have like, this is, you know, your information on building a vehicle. That was really cool. And, uh, but they have, and they have like all the information, like monster truck, what that gives you. And then they also have a, uh, like your sponsors, which Rutherford, which is, which is a uh, military. You have a uh, Miyazaki, which are like speed, fast cars. You have Michigan, which are, um, like over the top, crazy electronic um, supercars like this. Um, you could have slime, which is just just crazy. Um, you have Idris, who is like a super racer, kind of styled after. Um, really reminded me of uh, Miles 
um i can't think of his last name uh from um basically featured in uh ford versus ferrari the uh driver um and then you have like warden which is it's uh more of like a jail like you're a prisoner and you have to so this is like death race um 2000 is that right or is it just death race 2000 might be the sequel or scarlet you could be a pirate or you know a bootlegger or uh alien actually did they pull the aliens out i know some people didn't care for the alien or the zombie stuff they might not have put the did they not put the aliens in i've never noticed yeah i guess he didn't put the aliens in yeah so no aliens um yeah no oh, wait verney is frankenstein monsters the vehicles yeah i think there was Beverly was horror, which people decided was okay, but I guess they weren't so cool with. Huh. Okay. And uh, bootleggers, which are, uh, you know, you're taking booze around. And this is a really beautiful book. It's really nice. Uh, I was pretty happy to, to get this. So, uh, yeah, this is Gaslands and uh, Eventually, uh, me and my friend, uh, Jen, um, who may actually be on the show at some point, um, are going to probably play some gas lines at some point. Uh, maybe I'll play some with, with my friend. Uh, you know, I'm going to play some. We'll, we'll definitely play some of it and show the, the gameplay. So that's really cool. Um, and I i'm uh thinking here and uh i don't know um as far as news this week i guess we should kind of go into something i don't really i can't think of anything oh this is a big one uh playstation 5s are finally uh, more available so if you've been wanting to get a playstation 5 now's a good time to do that um they're they're available so it's pretty cool don't have a controversial topic this week and uh, don't want to argue with myself, but maybe you have some questions for me. Put them down in the comments and subscribe and all that stuff. And if you want to help us out, you can go on to patreon.com, the real game, real gaming fix, and uh, sign up for one of our tiers. We would really appreciate it. It helps us out. And uh, that is about it um i'm going to oh um also we have our sponsor bits and bytes uh, bits and bytes is in uh hornbrook california by um situated by the uh klamath river and you can uh, get a float at Bits and Bites and go down the Klamath River in Hornbrook, California. And eventually they'll have food. They're still working on that. Um, and you can go on to bitsandbites.com and reserve your float in Hornbrook, California to go down the Klamath River. And uh, with that, I think I am. Uh, done uh with this segment so we will be so uh next i'm going to show you guys how to play and make your own magic deck and 
stay tuned because after after that i think um uh, one thing is is i think i'm going to use i'm going to take that deck uh, whatever it is we come up with and uh, why don't we put it on uh arena so you can check out that deck on arena and uh, see how it plays come play me on arena with the deck that you just saw me make and uh actually come to come on arena and uh what we'll do is i will i'll, I'll set some time and if you uh if you beat if you beat that deck then i will send you that deck and it'll just be the first person that comes on arena and challenges me um i'll give my information out and you can go on and uh challenge me uh, with that deck and if you uh if you beat me i will send it to you all right and now let's uh let me show you how to make a magic deck five four three two and one so this uh what we're going to do today is i am going to uh, just show you how to make a deck which uh this is obviously for someone who just started out in magic but i wanted to uh just kind of show some techniques and some ideas on how to uh make a deck and i thought that this was a good way of doing that and uh, I have here, um, this I just picked up uh, last month. This is Forgotten Realms. So, with uh, a dungeon extra. And here's some cards I picked up from the new set. Um, Ravnica uh, Dark Hunt, I want to see. And uh, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of show how to put together a deck. Like, let's say you have all these cards. And uh, so, I have all these cards. So you open up all your packs. This is, uh, when I bought this it was 10 packs, now um, it's eight packs, and it's, uh, it's a set. But now it's a little bit, different. So um, what you're going to want to do is, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming this is uh, going to be a standard deck. So uh, basically what you want to do is you want to figure out first of all what you have the most of or what has the best in it. But first standard, that's really what you want to do is you want to find out what you know you have can make sets of. For just starting out, because like even if it's not the best, then you know you're gonna want to try and do that. Okay, so right off the bat, you have I have uh, three dungeon crawlers. Dungeon crawler is pretty good. It's a uh, one black, and uh, dungeon crawlers are under the battlefield tapped, and whenever you complete the dungeon, you may return dungeon crawler from your graveyard to your hand. It's a zombie. It's a two one. It's kind of low cost too. Uh, then you have two shambling gasps, so that's not a bad idea. So we're definitely leaning towards black at this point. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with. So we're gonna work from black, just because sometimes you just have to pick a color. So we're just gonna. So first you're gonna get all your black. This takes a minute, obviously. And, uh, yeah, you're going to get all your black. There's a black right there. Okay. So we're going through there. So far, no black. 
we got a swamp, but most likely, well, I'll, we'll, we'll set that there because, you know, we're going to need land, obviously. All right. We're still looking here for some black. There's no black on that one. Hopefully this all has black because pretty soon we won't have enough black. We need about 20 black or maybe a little less than that. from that set that's all the black that we had in that from that box and this is uh, like I said this is the new um, Ravnica so which uh, comes with these cool pictures which I thought was kind of nice there's they have a swamp Baneblade Scoundrel. All right, so that's our black. Now uh, we we're either pro we're probably going to go artifact black, um, based on my my numbers here. In fact, let's do that right now. Let's uh, let's grab all the artifacts up because. We want to make sure and get going. And by the way, if you're ever playing Magic and someone's like, hey, you know, I, I don't think that you'd be able to get it or or some, you know, stupid thing, just, um, you know, forget that noise. looking for some artifacts so it's like people will tell you things are very complicated and yes like in order to be like the tournament champion it might take a lot of more dedication or whatever but to play to just have a fun game uh, oh here's here's a black artifact I didn't notice um, but just to play there's nothing stopping you from just, you know, grabbing some cards and putting together a deck and playing with your friends, you know. Uh, a lot of people play casual. I'm, I play casual all the time, and I love being playing casual. I played casual, I've been playing casual magic for ooh, since uh, 93 right as it was coming out I went I've gone to uh, I participated in the entire time that I've uh, been playing magic I've participated in I want to say four tournaments one of the tournaments I put together uh, the other tournament was at a convention that I don't talk about anymore. And, uh, yeah. Oh, my bad. This Paladin Shield is a white, white magic. They now have, um, they have these colored artifacts. But like I said, if, if this is probably... You know, if you're you're watching me and kind of learning how to put together a deck, this will um, increase your game though. Like if you don't, 
if, if nobody's ever really sat down and, and shown you how to do this, then this will make your game a little bit stronger, I think. All right, so we're gonna put these artifacts to the side and I'm gonna put all these cards to the side or away, basically, because um, it's, it's confusing. I don't really want all these cards. Does that do that? Show you how to sh how to shuffle in deck, and like I said, you'll 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 have a deck, and then you can apply this to any cards that you buy, and that's uh, that's the whole point of everything. Okay, put that away. And these, by the way, um, they're called uh, they're now called bundles. They used to be called fat packs, but now they're called bundles. And uh, for basically forty dollars, you get now you get eight set boosters, a die. And a little box, a little box to keep things in, like this. You get a special. Oh, I haven't opened this at all. But this has a treasure chest in it. Actually, you know, I'll open this. I'm kind of surprised it didn't open. I saw the treasure chest, but I did not open these. Okay, so you got a treasure chest. Okay, so it's a treasure chest and land. And then this is the plain land. So these are the foil lands and these are the plain lands. Got it. Okay, cool. And we'll, we'll need the plain and, uh, actually I'll probably lean towards plain lands. Um, might have to throw some foils in to make it because I do want to have a completed deck. All right. And uh, maybe the next series we'll, we'll show how to play test. I don't think I'll do that today. All right. So, oh, and then this goes back into my set of uh, Ravnica um, Dark Hunt, Dark Hunters. I don't know. I, I know I'm totally mis missing the name of it, and uh, probably have that on the show notes, so you can actually check. All right. So here we go. We have some uh, black cards. There's two things you want to go with uh, is playability and cost. I like to go to cost, and then I can read, I can check playability. Um, also, like what's complementary with the things you know you want in there. So, and like usually you might want a combo or whatever, but really the whole idea with this is. You want something that's going to be a fairly good toolbox at least to start playing. So you want to be able to have a couple creatures. You want to be able to have some effects so that you can you can do well. You can swing. You know you can affect game state a little bit. That type of thing. Maybe a little field clear. And I think this this should have that in there. So. Um, and basically one thing is when you're looking at cost is you want to make sure that if something costs a lot that it has a lot of good upside to it. Is that the one? Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is the one that um, it starts out as. Do the flip clock cards. All right, so. So you want to um, you want to kind of try and make sets, and as you have sets, you kind of put them you put them together, but you might. So we have some chattering skeletons, fiend death. Up with your rule. Um, one thing I might do is I can put this deck together on uh, Arena and I can actually play it. So um, if you're interested and you'd like to actually see how this deck plays, 
I'll uh, I'll, I'll build it an arena, and uh, when I and there's a zombie ogre right there. Some of these are a little bit pricey, but that's okay. Like these are these are fives, and what it does is at the beginning of end step, if a creature died this turn, venture into the dungeon. So it's a three five, and it has venture into the dungeon, but. I don't know, like to me that's not amazing. Just depends. Then you have a uh, Deadly Dispute. Deadly Dispute. I don't know if I have Grim Bounty, but Grim Bounty is a pretty good card actually. Kind of expensive, but it's not bad. A uh, Yonti Blade is really good. It's got Death Touch, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you venture into the dungeon. But it's got Death Touch. It's a 2-2 with Death Touch for only 3, so it's got a really lot, a lot of good upside. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can go into the dungeon, so then you get an ability. And that's pretty cool. The way the dungeon works is that uh, you have a room, and the room will give you an ability. So you want to be able to do that. It's pretty cool. Uh, then we have Fate's Reversal, which is a uh, 2 cast. Return up to one uh, target creature card from your graveyard to your hand and venture into the dungeon. So it can uh, bring a card back for you and uh, you could also um, go into the dungeon and get an effect. So that's pretty cool. Manticore is four. Uh, Bayful Beholder. Um, this is pretty good. It's You get to choose one. Um, each which is uh, either each opponent sacrifices an enchantment or creatures you control gain menace until end of turn. Um, so menace means that uh, they can only be blocked by two or more creatures. So that's a pretty good effect. And it's a, it's a six um, for six five, which is nice with the effect, but you wanna be careful with that because it's a little, um, it's a little bit, uh, expensive. But if you put one in, it wouldn't be that bad. Then we have Precipitous Drop. Um, Enchanted Creature. When Precipitous Drop enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. Enchanted Creature gets negative two, and it gets negative five instead, as long as you've completed the dungeon. So um, you could use it to effectively kill a, a character or um, weaken them enough that they might not be able to do as much damage. And that is... Four. Then we have some more Fates Reversal. That's a play set of Fates Reversal now. We have Lightfoot Rogue. Uh, whenever Lightfoot Rogue uh, attacks, roll a d20. Lightfoot Rogue gains Death Touch until end of turn, so that's pretty good. Uh, and what that does is, so when it you're rolling a die, and if you get um, some of these numbers, you get more effects. So this one... 1 to 9, you gain death touch until end of turn. It gets plus 1 and gains death touch until end of turn. Or it gets 3, gains uh, first strike and death touch until end of turn. And it's only 2. So it's pretty nice. You get to roll um, whenever you attack. You get an effect. So it's either going to have death touch or it's going to have everything in death touch. And there, there's no downside to this card. So I don't know why you wouldn't run it. Um, and it's only 2. Raven, Fe Raven Feeblement is a negative four, negative one until end of turn. So if you, you kind of have to realize that someone's attacking you before you use this, but it's not, not a bad card. Um, I don't want to see that. Shambling Gasp, uh, it's one, one. And when it dies, you choose one. You can um, brave the stench and target creature gets negative one, negative one until end of turn or search the body and create a to treasure token. Treasure tokens are kind of neat. They are an artifact that uh, allow you to cast mana, so that's pretty good. And then uh, three dungeon crawlers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go cheap first, and we're going to make sure we have monsters. So we're going to go for cheap monsters. we got dungeon crawlers, gasps, chattering skeletons, a little pricey. Um, definitely going to get the Yangti Fangs. They're three, so they're a little bit more, but that's fine. And Sepulchre Ghoul, Lightfoot 
rogue. Vampire spawn. And uh, blood this blood thief here, which is at the beginning of your end step, if an opponent lost life this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target vampire you control. And then uh Clattering Skeletons, which is four. It's a little high, but it's still not too bad. And then, um, so you can bring your creatures back. You can get Fates Reversals. That's four of those. And, This one's really good, Deadly Dispute. As an additional cast to cost as an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice an artifact or creature, draw two cards, and create a treasure token. So this gives you the token that you can uh, it's an artifact that you can add one man of any color, and then you're also allowed to draw two cards. Um, but you just have to sacrifice an artifact. But that artifact could be a treasure token, so it kind of can feed itself. It's pretty nice. Um, this is good protection for your creatures, Feign Death. Until end of turn, target creature gains when this creature dies, return it to the, to the battlefield tap under its own control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. And it's only one, so it's not too bad. Uh, Precipitous Drop is good because it can um, weaken your opponents. Oh, this Bane Blade Scoundrel, it's four. Um, and when it becomes block, each creature blocking it gets negative one, negative one until end of turn. So that's pretty good. And then it becomes a werewolf that uh, when it becomes block, each creature blocking gets negative one, negative one end of turn. And whenever a creature blocking being club marauder dies, that creature control loses one life. So then we have um, necrosynthesis. Enchant creature, whenever another creature dies, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature so it gets bigger. It's pretty nice. Um, and then another counter is a crawl from the cellar, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand and put a plus one plus one counter on it with flashback so it can be played out of the grave. Now this is pretty decent. Um, nothing's jumping out at me. Uh, oh, maybe this rock reunion for one. All right, so now I'm going to count. So what you're going to do is you're going to count. Oh, uh, also check for traps. This one, a uh, target opponent reveals their hand, and you choose an online card from it, exile that card, an instant card, or card with flashes, exile this wheel. They lose one life, otherwise you lose one life. So you're going to lose one life for um, if, if you don't uh, get a card with flash or an instant card. But because that's what you're looking for is instant cards. But you still get to get rid of their one of their cards, which is always good. Um, and this will get rid of yeah, you can get rid of a creature or basically anything but a land. So that's pretty good. All right, so let's do a count real quick. Uh, remember, we're making a 60 card deck. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So 29, uh, so basically I like to have 40 cards in a deck. Uh, Ravel Enfeeblement is one black, so there's 30 right there. And we'll, we'll, we'll put the zombie ogre, ogres in there. Uh, let's do two of those and a Baleful Beholder because it's six. And we'll put this Flash Manticore in there. That's, uh, we'll do a count again, but I think we're at 35 now. And uh, Eye of the Beholder is six. Um, target creature gets 11 11 until end of turn. And actually, let me see if I have any black rares. I didn't think about this, and I should have. Um, I didn't look in the rares section. Yeah. So 
and we'll look real quick and see if we have any black rares that might be good additions. And we might not. Oh, that's right, we have that one. Oh, this is a good one. This is Evan Death the Dracolich. That's a nice rare. Actually, that's not a rare, that's a mythic. I think Arc Lich, but I don't think we're to, we're finishing enough dungeons to justify that. So, I'll go with Drac Lich. Um, it enters the battlefield tapped, and you may cast it from your graveyard if the creature not named Evan Death Drac Lich died this turn. So, it's got a flash. It's a dragon with flash that can come back. It's got flying, and it enters the battlefield tapped, but you may cast it from your graveyard. So, it's going to have to wait um, one turn. Um, it comes into the blade tap, so it can't be used as a defense. So that's one downside. But other than that, for four with flash, and it's a it's a, it's a nice dragon um, that flies. So that's a good good card to throw in there. All right. Um, and oh, had a little bit of an uh, issue, so I don't know um, where, if uh, what what was taped. So uh, continuing. Um, so now we have. So uh, just to recap, I added these um, five artifacts, and we now have. 40 cards, I think. We're going to count them right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay. So that would be 42. So now what you want to do, um, and this this comes up a lot, is you now want to go and figure out what your cheaper cards are. That's usually the way I will cut them. So more expensive cards go first. Um, let's see here. Those expensive cards that we'd have to pick from are we have the Zombie or Ogres, Faithful Beholder, Manticore, Eye of the Beholder, and uh, this Dracolich. And remember, we're just, we just need two, really. So, uh, let's see here. Enter, destroy target creature opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. And it's got flying, and it's 2-1 for four. It's got flash, and it's only four. So I'm going to go with the two most expensive cards here, which are, uh, I believe, Eyes of the Beholder and Baleful Beholder. So we're just going to get rid of these two six draws, which is not a bad thing at all. All right, now we need 20 land. I've got two swamps right there, but that's not going to do it. So, I have luckily one of these, and usually uh, players will offer you land. Like if you're, you're missing some, it's a pretty easy trade to do. It's not a big deal. Um, if game stores sell it, usually they don't anymore, then uh, it's pretty cheap. There's four right there. Okay, so this was only a set of 20 land. So I may not have enough to do this um, without tearing apart a deck. I don't want to do that, but I might if I have to. All right, so that's four swamps. I'm guessing it's going to be four. Yep, that's four. Okay, so that means I need eight. 
and I know where my land is. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think what would be more expedient to go and get land on my decks uh, just to make it clean. Well, you know, sometimes you have to improvise. So, what what you would do usually is you would take one of these these extra lands and you would put them in and you'd write swamp on them. But I'm not going to write swamp on them. I just have planes and and basically you have an all black deck, so you just you know ask for a courtesy that all these be seen as swamps and most. Players will let that happen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I miscounted. That's eight. I need two more. So yeah, I'll have a prismatic amount of cards, but you get the idea, and that's what is important. Now, if 20 cards and you have 40 cards out of the set. Now you're going to want to uh, put your land in. So the way you do that is, I'm gonna show um, the first step and the second step so that it's just an easy thing to do. Now, I wanna say three to one ratio I think is about right. I may be wrong, but I think it's three to one. Oh, I forgot my drink when I went to cheating. I hope that that soda is not inundated, but it might be. Or, I mean, yeah. I have my little sprite that I left behind the thing here. Anyway, and this is this is a real good you know learning thing. Never on the field. Never on the field. So it is not going field. It is foreboding there. Um, usually anytime you play a game and there's a drink, um, like especially miniatures, they actually have a table set specifically or an area where everybody has drinks or anything, uh, probably never food, but usually having a meal and playing a magic game is frowned upon, but you never know. It's okay. Yeah, we'll sit there, okay. Cool. All right, so, anyway, three to one ratio. So, uh, what that is is for every um, three normal cards you put on a land. And I've tried to show people, I've showed this to people and they're like, oh, you know, Frank, you can't stack the deck. Like I'm not telling you to stack the deck. Actually, I mean I made a mistake. Hold on. I made a mistake. And you'll thank me for this little mistake. Um sometimes, you know, you skip a step. Anyway. Alright, so all the land's back. So what I forgot to do is you want to take and uh, you know, however you want to shuffle. I usually just do a nice couple hand shuffles. Most people don't want to bend their cards out. And if you have, um, which most people do, your um, sleeves on them, then that's kind of difficult anyway. So there we go. That should be a decent shuffle, and just in case, Let's do a couple of these bad boys. All right, now you're gonna put three and one. Three and one. Three and one. And one. And one. And 
and one. card is kind of different when you're shuffling that in they actually provide you with a card on this set I think this this card looks better than the list cards that they had but here I'll show you this card they have this card right here for that purpose say two to one or whatever if you wanted to but um, I'm, I don't usually do that so now what I'm going to do is go three and one three and one three and one three one three one three or one, three, and one. Then I'm gonna put them all together as my deck. Now we're gonna do this. Now um, most people are like, "Oh, well, that's pretty. That's a stacked deck, and that's not acceptable." To run. And whatever. So. It's not a stack deck, and the reason is is because you don't stop there. And then what I like to do is called a stack shuffle. Usually don't want to do this during games because people will get irritated. But this is how you do it. It's just six stacks. I'm not gonna count them out. You can see what they are. Just because for government work, there you go, and and this is a simple deck. You know, we're not talking about sideboards or anything like that. This is a pretty simple deck that you can use to play with your friends. So, um, we're going to do a couple of these here and there. Um, basically, um, we've always been, uh, you know, bringing up the community by showing, um, you know, just basic ways in which we've talked about a lot of um, just how to be in the community, but now I'm going to show uh, just a little you know, tips and tricks here and there about how to do some things. And uh, I look forward to showing some things like that. 
Uh, just like magic, there's a way to uh, put together your Yu Gi Oh!